Let's turn NFT into a racial slur against black people. I think we should do this for the following reasons. NFT starts with the letter N. NFTs are commonly associated with monkeys. Most NFT means involve a monkey of some kind, and a lot of NFTs are just monkey drawings. Black people used to be traded as property. Finally, and most importantly, it would make all the people trying to get rich off this shit, especially celebrities and influencers, really, really mad. Let's do it, bros. Our bored apes racist the spectator. So the reason I read that out for you there is that lots of people have been sharing that post saying that like anyone who says, oh, you know, NFT apes racist have been punked by 4chan. You've essentially been tricked into thinking this because they've started these sort of rumors about it being somehow racist. So I wanted to start with that because I know a lot of people click the video and tell me like, oh, it was just a 4chan joke. So just to make you all aware, I am also aware of this thing, but just like my video about a year ago about are there neo-Nazi femboys? This video is like asking the question and we're going to look at the supposed evidence for the NFT apes being started apparently by neo-Nazis from 4chan. And the whole thing they've created, like this whole universe for these characters, is basically just one big fascist dog whistle. Now, like I said, we're not saying anything just now. We're gonna look at the evidence and we're gonna come to a conclusion. I mean, like, I want this to be true because I hate NFTs so much. I especially hate these rubbish ape art NFTs and crypto punks and everything like that but we're gonna have to see. So NFTs are getting like more unbearable these days. You've just seen recently Justin Bieber, Gwyneth Paltrow have recently bought some of these apes. You saw Paris Hilton promoting this scam on the Jimmy Fallon show. It seems more and more like this is a massive pump and dump scam. It feels like these celebrities have been promised a certain amount of money to pump these NFT apes only for them to eventually sell them and get out, which I believe is the intention for most of these people to make as much money as quick as possible and then leave the rest of you, you suckers who buy these stupid ape things, basically out of money as these apes become worthless in the next couple years. We've seen many a YouTuber engage in these kinds of scams, mainly for like different kinds of crypto coins, but I fully believe, I fully believe this ape yacht club thing is eventually gonna go the way of loads of those shit coins. So what we're gonna do in this video is I'm going to talk about the founders of the NFT Ape Yacht Club or whatever it's called. Then we're gonna talk about the person who's presenting the argument that this whole thing is basically made by 4chan neo-Nazis to somehow push like fascist dog whistles. And then we're gonna get into his argument and talk about the points I think are sort of valid, some of the points I think he's like totally reaching and then it's not actually clear if this guy is just playing a big prank on people. So this video is gonna be demonetized. I'm gonna demonetize it myself so I can talk about all these things in detail without censoring myself. But if you like my videos and you wanna support my work, please consider becoming a patron. I wanna build up as many one to three dollar patrons as possible. And if you become a patron, you get my Nintendo Switch friend code and you get access to the private patrons Discord server. If you wanna follow me on social media at the Cavernacle on Twitter and on Instagram, come join the Discord and the subreddit. All those links are in the description. Also, because a lot of you say you forget to do this, please like the video to support the video and maybe comment as well and maybe subscribe if you're new. If you ever want to check out my live streams, I usually do it two times a week and all of that stuff is archived on the Cavernacle Extra and that is my second channel. Because we're going to go back to the evidence a bit later, I want to first present you one of the most like glaringly weird things about this whole 8 NFT Yacht Club thing. Here is their logo on their website, right? And it seems quite familiar because it's seemingly modelled on a logo used by the Waffen SS in World War II in that they both have a skull, they both have like symbols on the side, in this case it's B-A-M-Y-C with the SS logo, it's two German ruins, and they got the board eight where the Waffen is, and they got the Yacht Club where the Totenkopf is. So you're right to think it's very, very bizarre for something so massive and so recently popular to have a logo that isn't even trying to be subtle in that it's actually inspired by an SS logo. Like if it was just the skull on its own on a black background, I probably would give it a bit of a pass, but it's literally designed the exact same way. So while a lot of the evidence I feel like I'm gonna present you in this video is reaching a lot, I think this is one of the most solid points and it is definitely really, really weird. So first of all, I wanna talk about the guy presenting the evidence and then I'm gonna talk about the two founders 
of the NFT8 before going into his evidence. So the guy presenting it is called Ryder Rips. So Ryder Rips is an American conceptual artist, programmer, and creative director. The creative director of OK Focus, a digital marketing agency. He's directed loads of music videos for very famous artists. In January 2021, Rips claimed authorship of the CIA's redesigned logo. On January 5th, a CIA spokesperson denied his involvement in the redesign. In an interview with GQ, who described him as an art prankster, Rips explained that social online platforms are games that are played within the attention economy. Authorship and sincerity are murky. Rips has made use of NFTs in his practice of conceptual art. In February 2021, Rips and American rapper Azalea Banks announced their engagement. They made an audio sex tape and sold it using NFTs, which was then up for resale for $260 million. By March, banks announced that they had split up. So this guy really does not seem like the most trustworthy person or credible source in that they've been described as like an online prankster. Also, their stances on NFTs are very, very weird. They seem to believe NFTs are good, but hate the Ape Yacht Club thing. So they retweeted an article about the person who basically created NFTs saying, when we created the first NFTs back in 2014, we were trying to support artists and center their needs as blockchain technologies took off. In my first time writing for The Atlantic, I explained how things didn't go exactly as planned. It talks about Justin Bieber buying the ape, saying clear market manipulation. This ape's fair market value is about 120 Ethereum. This is placed so they can just get press headlines featuring Justin Bieber and million dollars full scam. This is where I don't really understand if this guy is trolling at all, and he himself seems a bit like a 4chan troll in some ways. So John Terry is a famous footballer in the UK, former footballer, and he's infamous for being racist. So during a Premier League meeting between Chelsea and QPR on October 23rd, 2011, Terry was alleged to have aimed a racial slur at Ferdinand in the second half. It's alleged that Terry called Ferdinand a racial slur after the two were embroiled in a heated verbal exchange. So John Terry, who has some sort of 3D ape as his picture, says, welcoming Tammy Abraham into the AKFC team, another great player in great form as well. At the moment, with two goals at the weekend, delighted to have you in, mate. And Rada Rips retweets are saying, second day in a row, this guy's calling his black teammates monkeys and justifying it for a pyramid scheme. Lol, this shit is comical. Like, this is a massive reach because anyone who knows their football knows John Terry is a Chelsea legend. Tammy Abraham played for Chelsea for years and years, now plays for Roma under Jose Mourinho, who is John Terry's old manager. If they're both signing on to the same NFT scam, I don't think it's John Terry using it as an excuse to be racist. So I bring this type of stuff up because I do not know if this guy is trolling at all because this seems like a massive reach and it's gonna become like a theme of the video that although he presents some good evidence at times, some of the other evidence is totally ridiculous, making me think he could possibly be trolling or he just hates the NFT ape so much he is reaching to make his argument seem more compelling. So I think he's also involved in his own NFT like crypto punks. It's called Crypto Funks or something. So he says, I've seen people report that I'm the founder of Funks or the creator director of Funks. Neither is true. In fact, Funks are a project I support because there is no founder. The Anon devs split a while ago and the project is entirely in the community hands. For me, Funks have value because of what they represent and their importance in helping define what NFTs are. It signals my values and tastes, could care less if it goes to zero, it's something I believe in. And then he also tweeted recently, NFT is the world's most valuable garbage heap. So as a guy who's run up an article about how these ape NFTs are actually a front for like 4chan neo-Nazis to get rich or something, it does seem that he isn't really the most credible person either when it comes to NFTs because he might have an ulterior motive trying to bring them down and promote his own thing or that he's just seen to be like a massive troll making an NFT of his sex tape. So before we get into how this stuff is like about Nazism apparently I want to talk about the two founders of the Bored Ape Yacht Club just to frame the entire allegations. So in an interview they talked about their ideas originally for these different NFT characters so Gordon Goner, who's one of them, and Gargamel, they're both anonymous, they've never revealed their actual identities. The first idea we had was monsters, right? HP Lovecraft, Gargamel saying, well, we had this Lovecraftian kind of idea. We had an idea of HP Lovecraft monsters to do that type of gothic horror. Goner saying, because they're no longer copyrighted anymore, so it's not a trademark IP. So he said, oh, let's like build HP Lovecraft monsters. And then we started exploring and we just got really bored. Any idea that just doesn't have a kernel of truth to it, you get bored with. Gargamel saying, 
that's not who we are. We've never been Lovecraft fans. We were literally like, oh, we should do that. People would like that. And then, and then what the F are Lovecraft monsters anyway? Any other bad ideas? At one point we said, what does a crypto Twitter need? And we're like, they need girlfriends. So let's make them li little digital girlfriends. it will be like crypto cuties. And then all of our wives and girlfriends were like, I mean, a very, very unfortunate name calling it cuties after that massive drama around the Netflix film cuties. Hi cuties. Hi, 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 hi cuties. So we're now talking about the Bored Ape stuff. Gargamel saying, ever since the Bored Ape Yacht Club, we've seen like a thousand different av avatar collections come up. And a lot of them are really cool. But what we think was special and what people could kind of read on top of ours is that we didn't just throw 3D glasses onto apes and we didn't have a long essay on what exactly this was but we knew what it was it's like Wittgenstein's let unutterable be conveyed unutterably or Hemingway's iceberg theory we knew all about what this world was and why these apes are this way and that somebody else might get a little tingle looking at it and thinking yeah this is kind of different this isn't just random so the backstory is the year is 2031 the people who invested in the early days of cryptocurrency have all become billionaires now they're just bored what do you do now that you're wealthy beyond your wildest dreams? You're going to hang out in a swamp club with a bunch of apes and get weird. Why apes in crypto parlance buying into the new currency or NFT with abandon? We also just like apes, Gonna told me. So if we have our tinfoil hats on right now, libertarian crypto bros trying to make NFT girlfriends for other crypto bros is quite sus. Obviously the choice of Lovecraft, if we have like this conspiracy theory hat on, is very suspicious in terms of it's really well known that Lovecraft was an absolutely massive racist. But again, if we take the conspiracy hat off, it just seems like they were trying to jump on something that was popular and like they said, it's an IP they could use. But like I was saying before, no one knows who these guys are. They're both from Miami. They're both really into fiction writing. But other than that, most people don't know who they are. So I want to go into Rips's article now. So Bored Ape Yacht Club is racist and started by neo-Nazis. So that's a big allegation there. So let's get into it. So going into the troll angle, he seems to have like bought the domain Gordon Goner, which is one of the founders of the NFT Apes. So if you type in this guy's fake name this is what comes up on like the second search result so board ape yacht club is a series of 10,000 ape cartoons sold as nfts since the project's launch in april 2021 the value has amassed to over four billion dollars and spawned many similar projects the apes have various clothing and other traits most traits are racially oriented or involve some type of military history the act of disparaging someone by comparing them to an ape monkey goes back hundreds of years. At first glance, the apes in Bored Ape Yacht Club might seem innocent, but there are several traits that indicate that they are intended to represent black people and Asian people, such as the gold chains trait called hip hop, the gold diamond grills trait or the kamikaze headband from fascist imperial Japan, offensively labeled the sushi chef headband now even in this opening statement i kind of disagree with a lot of it now i like to do deep dives and analyze like lots of fiction as much as the next youtuber but golden chains on these stupid ape things i don't think are racist but then like i said it's hard to see if this guy's being serious because then he talks about the kamikaze headband from imperial japan which some of these apes do have i still think in this context it's reaching a lot so let's go into the article a bit further so knowing the history of the alt-right and 4chan types in crypto i started looking into it i found what i believe to be definitive evidence that the group behind the creation of these images are neo-nazis here is how i have arrived at this conclusion so the board ape yacht club logo looks very similar to the ss1 even containing the same amount of teeth in the skull 18 a number that adl has identified to mean adolf hitler so i honestly like i said at the start i think this is the best bit of evidence he has and again, like, I just don't know how you can defend this because it's so similar to the SS logo. There is no way anyone who designed this was not directly inspired by that SS logo. So if these guys are totally, like, legit, not racist, why are they designing their fictional club logo based on clearly on the SS's own logo. So the project was launched by a company called Yuga Labs. The Kali Yuga is a popular element of the alt-right traditionalist ideology and Yuga Labs has gone to the effort to embed the traditionalist philosopher's name, Reni Guanon, who is credited for bringing the Kali Yuga into the Western fort and is also an alt-right icon inside one of their puzzles. Also embedded is the word macaque known as a racial slur the macaque thing seems to be a massive reach because like macaque is just a name for a monkey and if they have an nft ape thing it's not totally unthinkable they would have other words for different types 
of, I don't know, monkeys and apes and things like that. The Kali Yuga thing is very interesting. They're touching something interesting because they've put lots of like screenshots in their article of 4chan people using this and 4chan Nazis. And I've seen this as well. Yuga Labs claims they are named after Yuga in The Legend of Zelda. But again, this is one of like the stronger pieces of evidence there might be some shady fascist people involved. So let's talk about this a bit more. So all the co-founders are anonymous. We don't know their true identities. One of their handles is Gargamel, a character from the Smurfs, who this is recently, is acknowledged as an anti-Semitic depiction of a Jewish person. Rips is Jewish, by the way. Also a common term used on 4chan to discuss Jews. Since I brought this up, he has gone through the effort to try and hide it. And he's right because Gargamel has actually changed his Twitter username to garga.eth when he clearly did used to be called Gargamel. Now, in terms of Gargamel himself, this is like a recent thing that happened like maybe eight years ago. People were saying that this character in the Smurfs is actually anti-Semitic. Here's some pictures of him being used by like 4chan trolls as an anti-Semitic thing. But if you actually go onto 4chan, here's a post from four years ago just them saying racist stuff and saying Gargamel is a Jew. So on Wikipedia, just some other stuff it was saying, according to French sociologist Antoine Bueno, Gargamel is suggestive of a stereotype of a Jew, having a big nose, magic power, love of gold and balding looks. In addition, Gargamel's cat, Azrael's name in Hebrew actually means God is my helper. In both Jewish and Muslim tradition, Azrael is the name of angel of death. In addition to that, it was a Jewish name, so it could be used as an in-joke for Delport's Jewish wife. So okay, maybe I can believe this guy like the Smurfs enough that he would pick Gargamel as his name, one of the co-founders of the NFT Yacht Club. So far, it's not looking too great for them in terms of having their logo based on the SS and having the Kali Yuga thing that is clearly popular on 4chan. But let's keep going a bit further. This one does seem like it's reaching a lot. They say basically, because these people have said they've played like um, RuneScape and, and games where you have like anagrams for names, so the other co-founder goes by Gordon Goner, who says he picked the name because it sounded like Joey Ramone, being that the group frequently uses anagrams and that it doesn't at all sound like Joey Ramone. Maybe this is an anagram. Sure enough, it's, it's a whole word anagram for Drongo Negro. Drongo is a common 4chan and Australian slang for stupid. It is in the dictionary as such a second, a second definition. So his name means stupid Negro. Writers often use anagrams for character names and they also often incorporate them within video games, some of which Yuga Labs have stated they play. Again, like this one is a weird one. It could just be a massive coincidence that his name does spell out Drongo Negro, but I don't think this really strengthens the case of these people being Nazis. I mean, it's interesting, but I don't think there's any like collaborating evidence about this because he actually asked on Twitter if anyone could like decipher what this was and someone wrote it basically as Drongo Negro. So he didn't even research this for himself. The evidence gets worse and worse the more you get on. So their video game, as well as the Rolling Stone cover, features rats with gold. This is a common anti-Semitic association. The video game also features bananas arranged to look like swastikas. I mean, here's the picture for you on screen. Do these things really look like swastikas? I mean, they do a bit, but could you also have these weird banana projectiles just all together like that, looking kind of like... What's, what is it, like a like a shuriken type thing? I mean, yeah, it does kind of look like a swastika, but it feels like you'd only notice that if you're actually looking for that. And while I feel like the other links are far more explicit, I feel like this evidence is pretty flimsy. As is this one, so their Rolling Stone cover features an ape with a Nazi hat on. No other militia in history has worn this style hat with a skull emblem. So here is the Rolling Stone cover. There is the skull on the white hat. I mean, as much as the actual logo does look like the SS logo, I'm struggling to see this as much being something that has some sort of connection to Nazi aesthetics. But I mean, here is an SS hat, and yeah, it does have a skull in the middle. I don't think it looks too much like that, to be honest. It looks more like a sailor hat. So some other information, this could look damning if we had more evidence, but at the end of the day, we don't. So the co-creators went out of their way to tell the New Yorker that the official launch of BAYC is the day Hitler died. 
April 30th, when the project was in fact released to the public a week before. I mean, again, with everything we've read, it could be a bit suspect. I don't know why they said it launched a week later. I read that article and it did say the launch of this date when it wasn't. The symbols, content and attitude in the images themselves have neo-Nazi ideology and war references such as this Imperial German helmet. So here is one of these NRT apes literally wearing something you see with like the Prussian military and Germans in World War One. A lot of people like to pretend that somehow being like a Kaiser boo doesn't make you some sort of like fascist adjacent person. I mean, this is pretty suspect as well. There's also a Japanese one with basically a kamikaze headband as well. At the very least, I would say it's quite tasteless for these products you're selling for hundreds of thousands of dollars to have the aesthetics of colonialists or actual fascists. Item with the rest of the evidence, I mean, it doesn't look like the best thing ever. The article is also talking about Hemingway's iceberg theory. I was trying to see if this guy was going to tie it to the Nazis believing in world ice theory. But basically, Hemingway's iceberg theory is about implied elements and like sort of working stuff out for yourself point is not to over explain use simplistic language to tell part of the story while deeper meanings remain unspoken but implied so rip suggests that this means they're actually hiding this whole thing is a big fascist story or like fascist dog whistle beneath the surface of like simplistic apes at like some sort of club so rips also does supply a 4chan thread where people are actually talking about them liking this stuff because it's fascist so a uh, board ape yacht club is a secret esoteric hitlerism dog wrestle getting here now base yuga labs was questioned as to the meaning of yuga in his name he said it was a character from zelda but twitter lefties are not buying they instead found out about yuga as in kali yuga from post world war one evolian type remember we talked about evola in the Lord of the Rings video last Monday, anti-enlightenment traditionalists and started delving into the symbolism in Bored Apes and basically confirmed its base, left the NFT Twitter as having full discussions on the hidden racism and it's awesome. It's great, it looks like it is base. I've listened to a lecture on Evolas. The logo is glaringly based. So the thing with 4chan, you can never take people obviously at their word. They could just be people trying to rile up the actual fascists in there. But, you know, a lot of them saying they like it and stuff like that. But they could just be reading into what they want to see rather than what is actually there. So Rips ends the article saying, why does it matter? To me, it's a terrible example to other creators setting a bad tone for future generations of art. We have already seen it morph into increasingly racist offshoots, similar to why you don't teach children to say cuss words. Beyond that, I'm personally offended by the Nazi references and find the act of covertly incepting an uninformed audience file. There is a true danger in dehumanizing people, equating them to monkeys. It justifies violence, racism, according to much research. What can you do? Spread the word, stand up against them, comment on influencers' pages, tell your friends, alert the press, the owners of the apes are not the problem. Covertly infiltrating culture of hate to an unaware audience is what's wrong and evil. I have dedicated a lot of time to researching this as an expert in the field of internet culture, working professionally in media design and internet culture for 15 years. With a BA in media studies and many credentials, I and many others feel very confident these accusations are founded. So my biggest evidence that this guy is trolling is mainly because of the tone of his writing. I don't know if you guys are getting that from me reading it. I just get a really bad vibe from this guy. Like, it seems like it's over-exaggerating. The language is too simplistic, and it's making it out to be, like, a bigger deal than it is, and it's coming down very hard on the side of, like, this is absolutely true. And it seems like, based on the evidence he's presented, while there's a lot of suspicious stuff going on, it doesn't feel like, in my mind, something you can come down completely saying, like, all these accusations are founded, especially when he mixes in pretty flimsy evidence that's reaching with actual interesting points at the same time and him being known as some sort of internet troll him also being known as someone who actually likes nfts as well and actually thinks it's some sort of good thing for the world makes me treat this with a massive amount of skepticism that being said i do think there is good evidence to a degree that there is something super fishy with these NFT apes and the owners of these NFT apes. Like, why are they still anonymous? Why was one of them called Gargamel? Why does their actual logo literally look like it was based on the design of an SS logo? The Yuga Labs thing is also super suspicious. So there's like a couple theories in my mind playing out on this stuff. And like Rips, I don't feel like you can definitively say that the NFT apes were made by 4chan neo-Nazis or people who love fascism and stuff like that. I just don't think there's enough evidence at that point. I think some of that is super interesting and I think people should be very skeptical 
of especially Gordon Goner and Gargamel or Garga Doc. ETH now. But I think this guy discredits his own argument by not treating this with nuance, which also leads me to feel like he is again trolling. And even if he's not trolling, he has the motive of he does not like these apes, but he likes NFTs. So making these apes look bad and trying to get them into a scandal could personally benefit him and his own NFTs. So that's one theory. Basically, this Rips guy is just trolling and looking way too much into it. But I do believe that these people, Gonna and Gargamel, maybe could have expanded the organization so much possibly they don't realize there are 4chan neo-nazis working for the organization and maybe putting these dog whistles in and maybe people working with them are doing this which to me would make a lot more sense but then being anonymous is super fishy anyway and i don't really understand how they could explain away a lot of the evidence in terms of especially the logo but as someone who's analyzed like fascist dog whistles and fascist sub communities to me personally it really just doesn't seem like there is enough visible evidence to say that the intention of this creation of nft apes is part of like some fascist plot or is directed by fascists or is designed to I guess make people like fascism more i really just cannot see this at the moment but i will say in conclusion i think there are enough legit points brought up in this article despite the fact i do not trust the person who wrote it at all that you should be fully skeptical of these apes and the people who make them that's before me saying all of this stuff is ridiculous please do not buy apes please do not buy cryptocurrency in general it's a massive libertarian scam it's not going to free the world it's not going to make you rich it's not going to make everyone more equal it's just for people to scam other people to get even richer and all of these nft ape things seem like a massive massive pump and dump scam done by really really rich celebrities and influencers to make you buy into a market which then they will sell you the stupid apes and then they're gonna get their money and run. Like cryptocurrency is already really stupid. NFTs are like another level. Anyway, let me know what you guys think of this theory. Where do you stand on it? Do you think these NFT apes were made by 4chan neo-Nazis or do you think this guy and even me are just really thinking too much into it. If you want to follow me on social media, at the Cavernacle on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to support my work, check out my Patreon. If you want to join a community, check out the Discord and check out the subreddit. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.